Here we are live at the AI Summit. I'm happy to say I've got with me here uh, Mohammed Sayed from Jaguar Land Rover. Welcome. Oh, thank you. So, Good you're involved in, in data science at, 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 at a car company. Where does that fit? That's actually a good question. Um, yeah, we do a lot of um, kind of um, innovative stuff on the machine learning side and uh, AI side. Uh, some of it is on the product, so you could imagine uh, we do a lot of work in terms of autonomous driving and uh, driver convenience and so on, but also increasingly on the operation side and decision support side to kind of help make uh, optimal decision uh, making processes within the company. So you could think uh, things like, I don't know, sales forecasting, uh, improvements to our quality, um, uh, decision support for our design processes and so on and so forth. So uh, increasingly we see uh, and, 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 um, uh, more and more interest in, in using kind of machine learning uh, approaches and AI uh, approaches to really utilize all the data we have around us uh, either for decision making or also to make our products uh, more appealing to our customers. So how long have you been there? Uh, I've been in Jaguar Land Rover for four years now. Um, uh, prior to my current role, I was a data scientist uh, working on sales forecasting, uh, but now I'm working more uh, on the kind of customer facing uh, unit, uh, really focusing on the kind of uh, quality aspect of our products. So where are the issues for, for autonomous driving? We've got AI obviously happening a lot behind the scenes so cars basically can know where to go. What, what's the status of that in your view? Uh, yeah, so there, this, this has been sort of progressing over the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, or even a little bit more than that. But at, at the moment we have very mature technology for, for, for autonomous driving um, across kind of various uh, providers and various companies. Um, of course, uh, Google and Uber and so on and so forth. Uh, so, but there is a lot of kind of a regulatory aspect that we still need to go through uh, in terms of building the confidence and the trust in, in, in the models and, and making sure we, we understand the implications of, of having kind of fully autonomous driving experience. But we have products on the road that are being used, I don't know, have been running for, for, for thousands and thousands of miles uh, with, with very minimal sort of impact. But it's still an area of progress. There is a lot of uh, things to explore and, 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 and finalize before, before it's a kind of a final ready product for, for, for end customers. However, say, having said that, we also have a lot of kind of uh, 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 aspects of the autonomous driving experience that is currently available in almost all kind of um, uh, new cars. So um, um, cruise control, for example, uh, adaptive cruise control. I mean, when, when I drive on kind of long trips and so on, I generally tend to use adaptive cruise control. It's fairly intelligent, so kind of the image processing is very accurate, it's very good. Uh, it gives really good uh, sort of driver convenience. So from a kind of driver convenience and assistance, we also have lots and lots of technology that is currently fairly uh, established and fairly mature and, and is kind of part of our product offering uh, at Jaguar Land Rover and also our competitors. So is that where autonomous driving really is? Like uh, several years ago, you, I'm sure you know, it looked like autonomous dri like self-driving cars were going to be everywhere and then the market kind of realized this is really challenging and then the technology started going into what you just described, adaptive driving. So is it going to be more driver assist for a long time before we get full autonomy? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly this is the case now. We have uh, driver assistance is kind of the, the focus of the product offerings that we have in the marketplace. Uh, but at the same time, in parallel to that, there is a number of established players who are uh, pushing the, the technology uh, uh, for, for fully autonomous driving experience. Uh, I, I, I'm not an expert in this space, but I, I would imagine in the next 10 years or so, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this became part of the kind of the, the everyday life. There are certain challenges in terms of the uh, kind of regulatory aspects, the legal aspects, uh, the whole kind of safety and trust around those, those sorts of experience. But, but I think we, we, we are making uh, huge steps in that direction. In that, in data science in general, and machine learning, is regulation behind or ahead in terms of the technology? Uh, I think to a large extent, we are doing a so the regulations are kind of doing a catch-up game. Of course, this is an open space at the moment, very hot. There is lots of investment, lots of new ideas that people are trying out and, and, and testing out, and, and those bring in uh, challenges in terms of regulation. Where do they fit? Do we have the right regulatory framework? Do we need to sort of revisit our existing regulatory frameworks? Do we need to adapt them? Do we need to come up with new? Uh, legislations and so on, and I think t t to some extent there is a catch-up game happening at, at, at the moment. Yeah. So you're presenting tomorrow. Tell me what you're going to be presenting. Uh, so I'm, I'm uh, presenting about some of the uh, work we're doing in, in our quality analytics space. So we, we're interested in making our products more and more reliable. So uh, in, in, in my team we, we do a lot of work 
um, kind of exploring different data sets that we get from our vehicles, from our retailers, from social media, and from so on. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to talk about how we use uh, small data sets uh, at early uh, stages of, of an issue emerging in, in the field, how we use small data sets to kind of predict what, what the likelihood of having a bigger issue in the future is so that we can really respond as early, respond as, early as possible. So it's kind of, we tend to call it kind of early warning systems based on our customer feedback. So really listening to our customers as early as possible so that we are able to respond in a timely fashion to make changes if necessary in our products, in our manufacturing processes to enable us to stop producing any faults or any bugs in our, in, in our products. So this is kind of the space that um, we are working on, uh, I am working on certainly. And uh, uh, tomorrow I'll be talking about certain challenges that these sorts of problems bring. Uh, generally uh, speaking around uh, kind of data availability, limited data, how do you make decisions under uh, uh, constraints of limited data? How do you reason with uncertainty? How do you express uncertainty? And how you deal with, with all of that in a kind of a decision making framework? And is privacy an issue here? Uh, certainly, uh, whenever we deal with customer data, uh, we have to um, abide by uh, GDPR uh, regulations. Um, um, a lot of the data that we deal with are kind of vehicle related, so potentially the privacy is, is, is not a major concern. The other cars but, don't care. <laughs> yes, uh, but yes, whenever we, we, we have anything to do with the customer, yes, there, there are um, um, uh, sort of stringent frameworks that we have to follow and, and, and processes and procedures we have to follow. Uh, whenever we're dealing with, with customer data. Yeah. So a year from now, we're sitting here having this conversation. What will we be talking about in relation to data science? Uh, sorry, could you say again? Uh, the same thing? Um, uh, uh, sorry, could you A, a year person? from now, uh, yeah. we're sitting here having the same conversation. What will be the issues a year from now? Ah, uh, good, good question. I think a lot of the issues that we're talking about today about, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, labeling data, uh, uh, limitations of, 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 of the current uh, modeling frameworks we have, uh, limitations about uh, uh, explainability of our models, our ability to, to kind of uh, hold our models accountable, accountability of models, transparency around that. All of those, I think, are, will still be relevant next year and, and a few years ahead as well. Yeah. I look forward to that conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.